If you were trapped in a school and forced to kill your own teacher, what would you do? This creature is not human, and these kids are going to have to figure out the most creative of ways to kill it if they want to survive. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Koro-sensei in Assassination Classroom. This creature is more than meets the eye. This is class 3, and they only have one test that they need to pass. Kill their teacher. Readying their guns, Nagisa here and the rest of the class shoot at Koro-sensei while he reads out the roll call for the morning. This creature has no known weakness, and these students are going to have to get pretty damn creative if they want to beat it. Class 3E, also known as the end class, is the lowest of the low. The students in this class are the ones who failed their final exams to be able to proceed into the next stage of high school. Now, this is their only chance at redemption. The classroom is even separated from the rest of the school to further emphasize how damn stupid these kids are. On the very first day of class, this strikingly yellow forearmed creature known as Koro-sensei introduces himself to the students. The kids are confused by what the hell is going on, so this government official Karasuma explains that this creature must be killed for the good of humanity. This this creature is responsible for destroying the moon and will destroy the earth in the same way by March of the next year. This is top secret information and only the world's leaders know that the earth is soon going to blow up. He tells the students to keep this knowledge a secret or else they'll face a global panic. Suddenly the man tries stabbing Koro-sensei but his speed is unmatched. Getting the better of him, Koro-sensei takes the time to groom his hair while the man explains a little bit more about their new teacher. Koro-sensei's speed maxes out and Mach 20, or roughly 25,000 kilometers per hour. This means that he could easily leave planet Earth before it gets destroyed. To combat the creature, the Ministry has produced specially made BB pellets and knives, which cause extreme damage when used on Koro-sensei. Okay, this guy is no joke. This is Koro-sensei, also known as the world's deadliest assassin, and nicknamed the Reaper. Now, you might be wondering what the hell this creature is. His entire body is made from antimatter, which is a material in the universe composed from antiparticles. They have the same mass as ordinary matter, but have an opposite charge. If we were to see just how powerful this stuff is, one gram of antimatter could in theory produce an explosion the size of a nuclear bomb. Basically, this stuff is made from highly unstable matter and is volatile as hell. And our teacher is made from this stuff. And unfortunately, all of this insane power comes with even more insane abilities. This eight-legged teacher is immune to poisons, can compress his entire body and energy into a small crystallized sphere that is impervious to harm, even from a nuclear warhead. He can regenerate severed limbs, possesses superhuman senses, and can travel up to a speed of about Mach 20. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of abilities. Needless to say, we're gonna have to approach this guy with extreme caution. And these students are about to realize that killing him won't be nearly as easy as they hope. Suddenly, Koro-sensei grabs the gun out of his hand and detaches Catches one of his arms, regrowing it nearly instantly to the shock of every student. The man tells them to calm down and reveals that Koro-sensei here made an agreement with the government to never hurt the students. This creature is like no other. He tells the students that he's decided to accept his death as long as he gets to teach this school's Class 3E. The government doesn't understand Koro's conditions, but either way, the government official informs them that they've put down a 10 billion yen reward to whichever student can assassinate the evil teacher. From that point onwards, the kids begin to realize the severity of the situation and begin to train even harder to kill Koro-sensei. Not only that though, Karasuma becomes their assistant teacher and is joined by a professional assassin known as Irina. She's an absolute badass and is great at her job, but not even Irina can cause a dent in Koro-sensei's armor. Failing her mission, she's demoted to a lowly English teacher for the rest of the semester. During lunch break, Nagisa here shows his classmates a potential weakness he found regarding the colors that Koro Koro-sensei switches to and from based on his emotions. His friends tell him it's a worthless piece of information and get ready to pull another assassination attempt in the next class. Looking worried, Nagisa informs Koro-sensei that his work is already complete. Koro-sensei then asks him to give him the work so he can read it over, but Nagisa here has something else in mind. In a single motion, he tries to stab Koro-sensei, but he's too slow. That's when Nagisa reveals a bomb attached to his shirt, blowing up and taking out the teacher once and for all. 
thrilled beyond belief. The kids congratulate themselves on a job well done. However, one of them notices the leftover skin when suddenly the teacher appears on the roof and tells them that they've been outsmarted. He reveals that he sheds his skin once per month and that the old skin took all of the damage. Realizing which student did it, Koro Sensei changes colors and tells the delinquents that while he's made an agreement to not hurt anyone in the classroom, he can still kill every single one of them outside of this room. He tells them that they have a lot to learn, and these students are going to have to attempt even crazier assassinations in the near future. The next day, the students have Koro-sensei trapped in a net. One of the students shows the teachers that he put down a dirty magazine exactly where the net was placed, showing off his intelligence when suddenly Koro-sensei spins the net over and over until it breaks. When the students notice a lapse of focus, they attempt to shoot the teacher, but they're still too slow. Koro-sensei simply swings himself onto the roof, where he tells everyone that he'll be doubling everyone's homework as punishment. Okay, this guy is a hornier bastard than our very own anime writer. Sorry, Dom. And this is a case example of why it's imperative that we plan our moves more carefully, and that we should always have a backup plan in place. Because if we've noticed with Koro-sensei, he'll almost always be able to foil our first plan A assassination attempt. But what if we had a contingent plan B, and a plan C, and a plan D? You get my point. We need to plan ahead enough so that this antimatter education loving monster doesn't know what hits him. An example of how we could have had a backup plan after the initial assassination attempt could have been in the form of when we caught Koro Sensei in the net. After he got caught, he broke off the basketball rim and landed on the roof. Now, if these kids thought ahead in advance, they could have gauged that the distance from where Koro Sensei and the roof was was close enough that he could have made the jump and that the roof, in comparison to anywhere else, was probably the safest platform to land on and high enough that no other students could come close to him. If we planned ahead, they could have tried placing a bomb on the roof or left some students in and around the roof area with the government-issued anti-sensei weapons ready to go. This is an example of how having a plan B in place could have potentially worked, and there are a myriad of ways that the students can incorporate this level of thinking into all of their future assassination attempts. That's when this cool-looking kid named Karuma appears on the scene. He and Koro-sensei introduce themselves by sharing a handshake when and suddenly, Koro-sensei pulls his hand in pain. Karma scolds him and reveals that he's attached multiple knives to his hand. This kid is smart, and the only reason he's in this class is because of his violent behavior in the year before. In the classroom, Koro-sensei notices a dead octopus on one of the tables. Outing himself, Karma tells the teacher he killed it, thinking it was him. This angers Koro-sensei, who promises to show him the extent of his abilities by sticking a flaming hot takoyaki into his his mouth. Later on, he and Nagisa have a conversation about their new teacher, discussing who the hell he actually is. Suddenly, Koro-sensei shows up out of nowhere to inform Karma that one of his goals is to improve the skills of his assassin students, adding that he's been taken good care of based on today's events. Karma asks him whether or not he'd risk his life to save his student, to which the teacher confirms he would. Hearing this, the student whips out a gun and jumps off the nearby cliff. If Koro-sensei comes to his rescue, he'll be shot dead by Karuma's gun. And if he doesn't, he'll lose his reputation as a teacher forever. Without hesitation, Koro-sensei creates a massive spider web, which breaks his fall while keeping the student immobilized. The student's plans are ruined again, but he promises that he'll kill him someday soon. Okay, these two guys here failed in an epic way. I bet Karuma didn't think of the fact that if Koro-sensei tried to save him at mock speed, he would have been dead. And if Karuma did manage to kill Koro-sensei, he'd also die from the fall. And to top that off, Karuma didn't utilize Nagisa at all, and just had him standing there like a chump. Two dudes with one half-baked plan. And you know what? I'll go out on a limb and say that even if we added a hundred more dudes to this plan, the only thing we would have had is an all-out disaster. Because yet again, these kids failed to pick up on the breadcrumb clues that our favorite teacher has left for us. And that is his love for the obscene portrayal of the opposite sex. I would have swapped out useless Nagisa for blonde baddie Irina, and would have told her to use her feminine ways to lure Koro-sensei into letting his guard down. For the sake of humanity, of course. All I would have her do is just flirt with him a little bit and let his guard down, before blasting a hole right through his brain. This way, we would have stood a better chance and we could have carried out this plan with much better results. Meanwhile, at the Ministry of Defense, the government officials worry about the fate of the Earth. There's seemingly nothing that can stop this creature, and if nothing can be done, the entire planet will be destroyed by March. The older official scolds 
the teacher for not being able to do anything, but informs him that they'll be sending in a transfer student as the next line of attack. The next day, Karasuma introduces a new student. However, she's not like the others. She's a female AI robot, shaped like a box, whose sole purpose is to take out Koro-sensei. The AI robot suddenly reveals a dozen machine guns from both sides and starts shooting at Koro-sensei. However, even the latest military technology is no match for his speed. After class, one of the students scolds the AI for creating such a mess with all of her bullets. And that's when it begins to calculate the percentage of success for killing Koro-sensei before graduation, revealing a number of 90.4%. During the next class, the students wrap chains around the AI robot to avoid cleaning up her bullets every time she fires. When class is finished, Koro-sensei approaches the AI and tells her to try getting along with her fellow classmates. The AI is confused as to how to do that, so Koro-sensei reveals that he's compiled data from all of class 3E students into these textbooks. He unlocks her chains and that night, the robot begins processing the information. The next day, the AI appears on everyone's phones, revealing that she made herself an app to be able to communicate with each student and support their assassination plans. In the classroom, the students decide to give her the name Ritsu, and she soon becomes friendly with everyone there. The students mention that there'll be another transfer student coming in, and that's when Koro-sensei enters the room for the morning roll call. Suddenly, a kid falls from the roof and immediately sits down while a mysterious man draped in white enters the classroom and scolds the kid named Itona for not coming in the proper way. The man apologizes for his actions and introduces himself as his guardian. Itona then gets up and grabs Karuma by the hair, telling him that he might be the strongest in the class right now, but not anymore. He confronts Koro-sensei and states that he is the only one worthy to beat in this room, insisting that they face off in this classroom straight after school. Setting up a makeshift arena, the two face off and the assassination attempt begins. Itona reveals tentacles of his own, which angers Koro-sensei. On the very first exchange, the teacher reverts to the classic roof trick, showing that Itona here is no pushover. The little kid manages to cut off Koro-sensei's tentacles, reducing his speed dramatically. Now, the probability of him dying from the next attack has increased by 60%. Koro-sensei laughs it off, and the little kid goes to finish him off. Suddenly, one of his tentacles is cut off by an anti-sensei knife, reducing his powers. Wrapping Itona up in his own skin, he throws the kid out of the classroom and ends the assassination. The man in white takes him away, promising to come back for revenge. Okay, Itona was the one foe who may have stood a chance against Koro-sensei, as he has tentacles of his own and incredible physical abilities on par with him. But he made the crucial mistake of doing what Koro-sensei expected him to do, which was to play fair. Because while they faced off fair and square, Itona missed the opportunity to create a coordinated attack with his schoolmates and missed a chance where teamwork could have prevailed over simply working alone. Remember now, killing Koro-sensei is the ultimate task and the fate of the world rests on our shoulders. I will note though that Itona managed to successfully cut off a few of Koro-sensei's tentacles, reducing his speed by over 40%. During this crucial moment where he was on the floor more injured and hindered than he's ever been before, before. So far, all of their attacks have been very isolated. But can you imagine if all 30 of them attacked Koro-sensei during this face-off? Because if there's one thing that likely won't work against our battle-hardened teacher, it's playing alone and fair and square. These kids need to start playing dirty and get it together if they want to even stand a minuscule of a chance of fighting against this creature with god-like powers. After class, Nagisa and the other students ask Koro-sensei why he decided to teach class 3E. He responds by saying he made a promise to someone a long time ago, but he can't tell them who it is. The only way to know is to kill him. So Nagisa asks him what they can do to improve their assassination chances. Koro-sensei suggests that they take weekend classes, naming it the Assassination Training Camp. During camp, Nagisa notes down a number of weaknesses he sees, such as his limited efficiency with after images. Meanwhile, Karasuma begins analyzing each student's strength and weaknesses for combat. However, he has nothing to say about Nagisa. Later on, the boys of the class begin a mission of their own, creeping their way into the girls' bathroom. Meanwhile, the girls talk with Irina about her love life, when suddenly, Koro-sensei appears from behind. He dashes out of the room before answering questions about his own love life, while the girls chase him away. The boys realize what's going on and decide to chase after as well, leaving Nagisa behind. Suddenly, Koro-sensei pops up in Karasuma's room. The man shows him the results from the assassination training camp, which disappoint Koro-sensei, saying that it's still not good enough. 
After training camp, a new PE teacher introduces himself as Karasuma's substitute and gives out free food for the first lesson. Karasuma and Koro-sensei look on while he tells the creature that they have to find new ways to assassinate him. The new teacher is instantly popular with the students. However, looks are deceiving and this nice guy is more than meets the eye. That night, Irina interrupts Karasuma to reveal that she knows all about him and the PE teacher's history, telling him about their intense rivalry. She tells him that he has a history of getting good and fast results out of his students. However, it comes at a cost. The next day, the PE teacher gets the kids to do laps around the schoolyard when one of the girls collapses in front of him. She tells him that she can't do this any longer and prefers Karasuma's classes. Angered, the teacher violently slaps the girl before being stopped by Karasuma himself. He tells him that this is his way of discipline. To prove his way of teaching is superior, the PE teacher asks Karasuma to pick one of his kids to fight. He will fight barehanded, and if the student manages to even touch him once, he'll concede defeat and admit he's a worse teacher. However, the PE teacher adds one more thing. The knife they use will be real. Karasuma gathers the students, putting the onus on Nagisa to fight in his place. Nagisa agrees and the fight begins. Nagisa slowly inches towards him, pushing him to the ground and placing the knife on his neck. The student wins and the PE teacher promises that he'll be back for more. Okay, while this may seem like sweet victory, this means so much more. This is just the tip of something that could, and most likely will, become a whole lot more serious in the future. The PE teacher was no doubt a self-righteous prick to abuse that girl student, but what Karasuma and the whole class failed to realize was that that PE teacher was humiliated and power-hungry based on how he handled his role as an authoritative member of the school, and the fact that he just vowed that he'd be back can only mean that the next time he he comes back to fight, it'll likely be on his own terms and without any forms of rules to go by, which means we can't let him get to that point. Nagisa, the girl who got slapped, or even yellow cephalopod Koro-sensei himself, of all, should have recognized that slap to begin with was illegal. And with corporal punishment in Japan being illegal, they should have used that PE teacher's act of rule defiance as grounds to sue him and get him off of the grounds to begin with. Not that that would stop Koro-sensei if he truly decided to kill him though, which would not be a bad option. Though if we're not going to kill him, maybe we should go to the legal route. Because in a nation that prizes conformity and obedience to authority, if the students don't act now, then they'll further encourage this behavior, which will lead to more future problems. And we already have our hands full with trying to take on Koro-sensei. We don't need any more problems or distractions headed our way. The next day, one of the students asks Koro-sensei to drink a poison she made. Suddenly, his face begins to transform and turn white. However, it doesn't work. During the next few days, Koro-sensei plays around with the kids, showing off new and improved powers to the students. The students begin to get angry and have self-doubts, telling that Koro-sensei that he's too good to be assassinated. This angers the teacher beyond belief, who tells him that they don't have what it takes yet to be an assassin, and he asks all of the class to gather in the schoolyard. With everyone's attention now on him, he asks the students whether or not they really want to kill him. He asks the professional assassin if she only plans one attack for an assassination. She tells him that a proper assassination with detailed backup plans for any possible scenario is a must. Moving to Karasuma, he asks him if the first strike is the only important one when using a knife. He responds by saying that the first strike is likely to be dodged, so follow-up strikes are even more important than the first. Koro-sensei tells the kids that is the utmost of importance that they continue studying in case he disappears or even worse, dies. That's when he jets off, circling right back onto the schoolyard with a giant military weapon. He tells the class that if he doesn't see any improvement in the students, he will simply vanish. He reminds them of the poison incident, telling them they need to be more deceptive if they want to have a successful assassination. A successful assassin is well-rounded in every sense of the word, a word that they'll soon find out the importance of very soon. Later that day, Koro-sensei tells them of a goal that they must achieve for the end of term exams. Each student who receives a top score in a subject will be allowed to destroy one of his tentacles. Losing even one tentacle will drastically decrease his speed and reduce his ability to create after images, making their assassination attempt a whole lot easier. Excited beyond belief, the class gets to studying after hearing the good news. Okay, if I'm these snotty-nosed kids, then I'm not sure what the hell they're doing. They gotta study Koro-sensei down to his day 
daily bowel habits. This is a case example of not putting in the extra work to study after school hours as well as during. These kids should be following Koro Sensei around the clock everywhere he goes throughout town as best as they can. Observing him at school only tells them one side of the whole story, and this is something that the class should take into account if they want to have any chances of killing him at all. We should round up the entire class and get them to help us, and above all, we need to make sure that we don't get caught. In the staff room, Karasuma tells them that the class's academic skills have drastically improved. Koro Sensei agrees, saying that the students need to be fit, not just physically, but mentally, if they want to assassinate him. Later on, Koro Sensei surprises one of the students and tells her that he plans to improve her English skills through first hand experience. Suddenly, he grabs and sends her around the world to learn everything the world has to offer. Before they know it, the day of their exam results have arrived. Announcing the students' scores, they realize that with the amount of top scores, they have the ability to cut off six tentacles. The students are thrilled and they get to work, making the final trap to assassinate Koro Sensei once and for all. That night, the class watches the fireworks from the roof, wondering if they'll really be able to kill Koro Sensei the next day. Suddenly, Koro Sensei himself shows up, wishing the students luck in their assassination attempt. Now, the day has finally arrived. The students get their anti sensei weapons ready for the assassination and reveal a massive trap with the sole purpose of killing their teacher. The kids tell Koro Sensei that they plan to cut off his tentacles and slow down his movements, afterwards, caging him inside water to finish him off. Surprised, Koro Sensei asks the students how they knew about his weakness to water, and Karuma reveals that he found out to do to him bloating up when the weather was humid and rainy. On the count of three, the talking ends and the action begins. The students begin shooting at Koro Sensei, cutting off his tentacles. Next, they throw as much water as humanly possible onto the creature. In the midst of the chaos, two mystery men shoot Koro Sensei with anti sensei bullets, creating a massive explosion which shocks all of the students. Okay, it seems as though these students, unlike the previous times, actually put some pristine thought and effort into their latest assassination attempt, which honestly is quite a refreshing surprise. But it still sucks, hear me out. As we know with Koro Sensei, nothing with him is as it seems, and I would have used all of my cards in our final assassination attempt that was taking place. Because if we remember, Nagisa was taking notes and noted down the behaviors and patterns of Koro Sensei. And since this is the final assassination attempt, I would have used the other two known weaknesses of Koro Sensei. First, the anti sensei material, and second, some questionable magazines. Because why in the world would the kids set up this perfect assassination contraption and not use every trick in their book to defeat Koro Sensei? For example, wrapping Koro Sensei up in anti sensei material like this guy had on earlier, before chopping all of his tentacles and not just six. Because anyway, you slice it. The only way to fight fair against this overpowered balloon head octopus would be to fight dirty. Now, I may be an expert on pretty much everything, and no, I don't care what you say, YouTube comments, but I'm definitely an expert on telling a bunch of kiddos their plan is not exactly all the way thought through. Confused, the students awake to see Koro Sensei gone, and they can't believe their eyes. Suddenly, they see him in a shallow puddle, now in the shape of a sphere. Koro Sensei reveals that this sphere that he's in is crystallized, high density condensed energy, meaning he can't be affected by water or anti-sensei substances. Karma attempts to shoot him, but it's no use. In this form, Koro Sensei can't be hurt. However, the form will only last around 24 hours. Karma suggests that they cage him up in a pool full of anti-sensei material, but Koro Sensei tells him he'll just explode again, breaking the cage and setting himself free. The students are disappointed, and suddenly, some of them begin to pass out. That's when a jeep comes rolling in, and the PE teacher jumps out with his Squad lackeys. He's back for revenge, and none of the students could have predicted him being this petty. The PE teacher reveals that the students are passing out from a toxin that they drank, and that they only have three days left to live once infected, and he shows that the only antidotes are with him. This is diabolical as hell, and these kids have no idea what hit them. But before we can address this fully, we should understand the psychological response to the act of fainting, which can come about due to the stimulation of the vagus nerve. This nerve is responsible 
responsible for the regulation of internal organ functions such as digestion, heart failure, respiratory failure, as well as vasomotor activity, which refers to the actions upon a blood vessel which alter its diameter. This is a reason that can cause the heart to slow and blood pressure to drop drastically. However, it's important to note that not all losses of consciousness are related to the vagus nerve. Now, the cold hard fact of the matter is, is that we can't get rid of the poison from our systems if we don't know what poison is being used. But the PE teacher is the only one who knows what poison it is. And he's the only one around here with the cure on him. However, the PE teacher made one final mistake in his threatening execution. He stated that the poison delivered to the students will kill them within three days. That means we actually have time to kick his ass. And sad to say, but the price of all of these students is worth the possession of Koro Sensei not being in their hands. Because let's face it, our yellow octopus friend at this point is basically a kid's toy sized B-41 hydrogen bomb, which means we can't afford to hand him over. And like I said, even if they don't make it, no kid is above dying for Koro Sensei, because the world is safer if he's in our possession than the bad guys. Sometimes you gotta make harsh choices in life, kids. Furious at the incident with Nagisa, he tells the teachers only to give him the antidotes in exchange for his arch nemesis. Kurosama approaches Nagisa, who is holding Koro Sensei in his hands. Koro Sensei doesn't believe that the PE teacher is truthful, telling him that something is off about the negotiation. Suddenly, a tentacle appears out of nowhere, attacking Nagisa and Karasuma. Climbing up on the jeep is Itona, who's gained complete control over his tentacles. Wanting to be the strongest, he chases after Nagisa and Karuma, who is still holding Koro Sensei in a ball. Meanwhile, the PE teacher laughs at their misfortune, saying that he'll be the one with the 10 billion yen. While he gets back into the jeep, the teachers look on helpless, with no way to harm the man because of the antidote. Still on the run, Koro Sensei tells Nagisa not to worry about the others and only focus on stopping Itona. Meanwhile, the class is treating the unwell students who are currently in critical condition. However, while they might be in the school, they're not as safe as they might think. Nagisa and Karma continue the chase up an electrical tower when suddenly a tentacle slashes the ladder they're climbing on, separating Nagisa and Karma. To free his hands, Nagisa throws Koro Sensei to Karma, but is soon confronted by Itona. He tries to run, but he can't escape. He's restrained by the tentacles and uses Koro Sensei to hit him away. Using the beams, he continues to climb while avoiding the tentacles until getting hit down and injured. Nagisa manages to make it onto the platform while Itona slowly walks towards Karuma. The boy admits his defeat and tells Itona he'll hand Koro Sensei over to him. That's when he kicks the ball over to Nagisa, making Itona even angrier. He demands that they give him what he wants, but his powers are about to disappear because suddenly it starts to rain heavily, causing Itona to cover up in fear. Nagisa hugs the boy, forgiving him on the spot. Koro Sensei realizes that the students decided on this day for the assassination because of the heavy rain. He tells Itona that he should stay in class E in order to become a better assassin and asks if he would like to join. Suddenly, the boys get a text from a fellow classmate telling them that something bad has happened back at the school. Arriving at the schoolyard, Nagisa is greeted by the PE teacher who demands that he hands over the sphere. He has one of the females captured and plans to bury her in cement if Nagisa declines the offer. He continues to push Nagisa to hand Koro Sensei over, reminding him that he has the antidote to the virus. But to the PE teacher's surprise, Nagisa pleads for him to be the one to kill Koro Sensei. However, the teacher doesn't agree and stomps Nagisa's head down to the floor. Nagisa smiles and hands over Koro Sensei. However, it's a fake and the PE teacher takes out a ball. That's when the rest of Class 3E comes out from the school building, all with guns in hand. Moments later, the PE the teacher and his lackeys are restrained with no way of getting out. Koro Sensei congratulates the students on their hard work, and the AI robot reveals that she's already found out the formula for the antidote, meaning everyone is safe. Looking above, the students see government vehicles coming to the rescue. What it do, weebs? I'm an Albert here. So, Albert, tell me, what did you think of Assassination Classroom? Well, first off, there's a reason why we did the live action movie and not the anime, and you can find out why in the pinned comment down below. So, my main problem with the live action movie was that it tried to adapt the anime too much. What I mean is that the story structure is all over the place and each point are disconnected to each other. But the visual effects are really good, the characters are funny, and Koro Sensei is a giant perv. Koro Sensei is a horny bastard, but here's the thing, the guy never dies. I don't know what the writers were smoking when they came up with this dude, but props to them because you just can't beat him. You really can't. But overall, great story, a lot of heart, and yeah, back to the show. In the government facility, Karasuma tells everyone they've developed a shelter to save Earth. Looking towards the monitor, Koro Sensei gives the class a final message, congratulating them
them on their progress, all the while being buried in anti-sensei bullets. On the count of three, the government announces that Koro-sensei, the destroyer of the moon, has been killed, leaving the students in tears. Suddenly, a yellow hand pops up out of nowhere, revealing the message to be untrue. Koro-sensei is still alive and well. Now back for the second term, the kids continue their assassination attempts. However, there's a much bigger threat waiting for them in the future. And if you don't want to get wrecked by no suspicious looking yellow tentacles, then like, comment, let us know what you liked, and of course didn't like it, don't forget to check out the Hobby playlist down below.